What's up, everybody? Welcome to Mike Dawes Has a Podcast. My name is Mike Dawes, and I do, in fact, have a podcast. This show is all about guitar, guitarists, and the music industry. Joining me on this journey are some friends who I've met on the road over the years, and I'm honored to share some conversations with guests I'll be meeting for the first time. Let's dive right into it. Nathaniel Murphy, welcome to the, the, the podcast thing. How are you doing, man? It's nice to see you. Not too bad yourself, Mike. Good, yeah, yeah, just locked down here. You're, you're, you've escaped to the States, though. How is it over in Chicago? It's gone all right. It's, uh, it's a bit all over the place, to be quite honest. It doesn't know what it's doing right now. So yeah, yeah. It's the be- what? best way I can describe it. How has it affected your, uh, your day-to-day? Um, not, not a huge amount. I mean, in terms of my work, obviously, I'm a, I mean, not a lot of people know I'm a soccer coach, but that's kind of gone by the wayside at the moment. Uh, you can only do it in a certain amount of groups, you know, numbers and all that, but that's, it's done, basically. So. Totally. Well, that's, that's something I wanted to touch on, man, because so we have met. We met once in Chicago, where you're living. Yeah. Even though, yeah. you know, your accent is deceptive and we'll get into that as well, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but uh, a, a lot of people perhaps might know you more for your Instagram name, which I'm going to completely mess up if I pronounce it. It's like Zeppelin Baranatra. Is that that's, right? That's, that's, no new, that's, that's <laughs> one of the more unusual ways I've heard it first. It's uh, Zeppelin Bornatra. Zeppelin Bornatra. Can you explain to the people uh, what that is? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I'll apologise in advance because it's ridiculous. So <laughs> it's from a while back. Um, it's an old, it's an it's an old email address that that I have, um, and that was the name. But it. it was when Led Zeppelin got together for that one-off gig, and you could only get tickets for it by entering via email. Uh, and I'm about 15 at the time, didn't have an email address, so I thought, right, well, you know, I've got to make one to enter it. And instead of me doing Nathaniel Murphy at AOL.com, I thought, nah, that's, you know, that's too boring. I'll do Zeppelin to show that I love Zepp, Led Zepp. And then um, the Born of Troll part is actually the name of the village in Ireland that my family's from. Amazing. So why, why I put them two together? And it is far too late to change it. <laughs> so Yeah, you're pretty far down the Instagram rabbit hole with that name at this point. Oh, it's, it's outrageous, isn't it? But I mean, it's 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 kind of worked out in a good way, I suppose. You know, it absolutely has, man. I mean, this is why I'm super stoked to talk to you for this this thing, this podcast project with Tone with Amp, because you know. It's basically a, a an excuse for me to get to chat to mates and people that I find super interesting, and yeah. uh, and I consider you both because you know I'm talking to a lot of people from continents all over the world. I was just doing the math in my head, and I think so far out of the people that I've interviewed, everyone's been on a different continent. You know, yeah, um, and it's it's a really diverse thing, the guitar scene. But I wanted to talk to you because you have this whole separate thing going on, where. Hmm. Like, like I said, you, you're have, you have this alias which is massive on Instagram. <laughs> it's 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 ridiculous. It's it's this Instagram, hundreds of thousands of just every time I open Instagram, and I'm sure a lot of people listening will attest to this. You pop up with just a different shirt on and a different guitar, playing some absolutely crazy thing. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, there are lots of players doing the whole social media thing. You know, I I got my yeah. my career started with with like a YouTube social media thing, right? But mm. the thing that I really wanted to share with the people and what I think is that it's very rare that, well, it's not very rare, but but I, I think it's worth noting the cases where the people who are blowing up are absolutely freaking sick. And you tick those boxes. There's lots of big guitarists on Instagram, but I just oh, wanted to, thank you, I wanted to have people understand that you are like the real deal, man. And we've hung out and you've played in, in Chicago Music <laughs> Exchange and stuff and this guy is a freak on the guitar and not just finger style, but all the styles. And I wanted to just try and introduce some more people to your music because I was listening to your album as well. So people people who are searching for Zeppelin uh, <laughs> might, not, might not be able to find your record. But uh, yeah, yeah, you got a record out. Um, mm-hmm. Do you want to tell the people about it quickly? Yeah, so it's uh, it's called War for the Moment. Um, just a lot of things. It's just me and the guitar, just all finger style kind of... Uh, Ideas that I had. There's a couple of cu- couple of uh, arrangements on it. There's a Fleetwood Mac one, and um, there's some Nirvana on there as well. But um, yeah, I released that probably about two, three years ago. So it's, it's probably about time that I did another one. To be quite honest. Well, um, I mean, but- yeah, I, I did my first album in 2013, and the next one in 2017. So it took a fair bit. And All right, so the- you, you beat me to it. I've got a, I've got another year left. Yeah, it's not Chinese democracy or anything like that. <laughs> 
but it's a great record, man. Really, and, and, oh, and, that, thank you. and no, no, honestly, and and that, and that's the thing is that you're you're known on Instagram as sort of a. You know, there's an expression, jack of all trades, master of nothing, right? But you appear to be a master of everything, all these different styles. Oh. You know, you've got the Chet Atkins stuff, you've got the, the Gypsy stuff, you know. But it sounds, obviously, listening to the record, that you are a fingerstyle guy at heart, which is another reason that I wanted to talk to you so we could geek out about our influences and, and things like oh, this. Because yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. hearing a lot of, like, Preston Reed on this record. Is that yeah, Was he a huge definitely. influence? Yeah, yeah, huge. Because, I mean, I remember when I first heard Andy McKee, it was probably, like early to mid 2000s when it you know kind of when youtube was kind of first gaining ground in that and i seen it and it was obviously mind blown because i never seen anything like that on the guitar before um and obviously kind of get down a rabbit hole and I, I i loved all that kind of stuff but when i first heard preston reed it was ladies night and you know i, I was kind of a blues guitarist blues kind of rock and roll guitarist and when i heard ladies night it was in it was kind of the percussion idea, the acoustic, but all, it was bluesy. It had that, you know, that backbeat, that feel to it. And I thought, oh, you know, that was mind blown to me. So I had to learn it. And then I went down a whole Preston Reed kind of, uh, you know, trail for a while, for quite a long time. And he, he's been a huge influence for me. Um, I mean, Michael Hedges as well. They were probably the main two finger style influences for me, to be quite honest. Hedges and uh, Preston Reed. I remember when I first heard Michael Hedges uh, Ritual Dance. It was uh, yeah. the live at the bottom line recording, and that blew me away. I'd never heard anything like it. That was funny. I was just talking to Khaki King for an episode of this, um, and we talk, yeah. we, we spoke about her doing ritual dance for that movie. Yeah, yeah. There was yeah. this movie August she did Rush, right? called August Rush. Yeah, yeah, where yeah. she had to... She was telling me this... Well, I mean, people will hear that episode, but just to paraphrase, she basically got drafted in to sort of play the, the kid's hands, um, yeah. uh, this, this child <laughs> actor... But apparently, you know, it was all really sick, and and um, yeah, just it was. Well, I'll let her share the story on the other episode because it's a fascinating story involving yeah. David Crosby and like all, all, oh, all wow. kinds of crazy stuff. But but that's really interesting. So you discovered the genre through Andy McKee and then worked backwards. Kind of, right? yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, that's that's probably the best way to describe it. Um, and then obviously, there's, there's so many players out there. To be quite honest, like Antoine Dufour. You know, hopefully, I'm saying his name right. Um, but Man, the, as, no as, as, as English English accent people, like just saying any kind of French Canadian or French name is is horrible. I had a I have a French ex girlfriend, and it's 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 an insecurity yeah. that all people with like you know English UK dialects. Have. Well, that's what I mean. Me, me being from the north, so Defour, it's a, <laughs> Defour, Defour, um, <laughs> Defour. <laughs> proper York tracks, Defour. Um, but yeah, there's loads, and I mean I'll, yourself as well. Like I remember. Oh. Um, watching your your Gautier, and I, I will say, and not just that, just saying it now because you're on it. I, I'd, I've said it to other people in the past. Your arrangement of that song is probably the best arrangement I've heard of any song. Now, bear with me. The reason why is because, I mean, obviously, as fingerstyle guitarists, when we're arranging something, it can either go two ways. Either a, we want every single part of the song, or it can be b, you're just on in interpretation of the song and I think you have done the best arrangement of a song where it includes absolutely everything I will say that 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 for me has always been the benchmark your arrangement of that song so I've always wanted to say that oh, it's frightening thanks, it's frightening how good that is honestly oh thanks so much man well, that's, that's really kind of you I mean it's uh, it doesn't include everything <laughs> well to, it's and I spoke it's to as Gautier, good as you're gonna get I spoke to Gautier and he was like yeah there's some stuff missing <laughs> Uh, it's as good as you're gonna get. Put it that way. Well, that's very kind of you, man. Very kind of you. Well, this is this is this is really fun already. <laughs> <laughs> but no, well, uh, that, that's that's really interesting, and that that's that's a testament to Candy Rat Records as well in that era. Like for anyone listening that that perhaps is a little bit younger, around sort of, you know, when YouTube first started, um, there was a time where where you could be featured on the front page of YouTube. And what would happen is, you know, if a video got loads of views, it would get featured on the front page for a short amount of time and then just get crazy amounts of views because it would be visible to the whole world. And and Candy Rat Records, um, based out of Madison, Wisconsin, um, released a few videos with Andy McKee, um, who is, you know, good friend, amazing guitar player, um, uh, absolute guitar hero to anyone with an acoustic guitar. Um, and there was a time where three of his videos became the top videos on YouTube as yeah. the whole website. And and it, that's just insane to think about. And that, yeah. that 
then exposed everybody to other players like Antoine Dufour and and, and Don Ross and players like that. And mm. yeah, and, and and it was very similar. It sounds like we had a very very similar um, start in finger style. But yeah. you went to the Preston Reed side, and I went to the Pierre Ben Susan kind yeah. of kind of um, Celtic finger style kind of yeah. side, yeah. which is interesting I mean, to me because you're you're you're. I, you're Irish? You're half Irish? Yeah, no, no, well, technically I'm, I'm 100% Irish. I was born in Ireland, all my family still lived there. Um, grew up in England, though, so I grew up in Manchester. So I was born in Ireland, moved to Manchester when I was about a year and a half or two, something like that. Grew up in Manchester. Um, moved out here in 2012, uh, but I go to Ireland like twice a year to yeah. see the family in it. Um, but yeah, how did you get into the acoustic kind of side of things? Well, I mean, uh, well, we kind of switched this around a bit. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, I was a, a rock metal guy, but my family were really into Pierre Ben Susan because my oh, wow. godfather um, is his designer for his artwork. So, oh. so I would get like Pierre Ben Susan tab books that he designed as like a Christmas yeah. present. But at school, I'd wow. be learning like you know Guns and Roses and Dream Theater and stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And then I guess those kind of schools combined, and then you throw a bit of Eric Roche in, and you know the, the, the Preston Reed thing totally passed me by, which is really interesting because I think a lot of people that don't know the nuances of fingerstyle can quite easily throw in what I'm doing with Preston Reed, but it's actually totally not that. Like you, you know, right? The Preston Reed style has a very distinct, excuse me, yeah, uh, kind of sound. And yeah, I wanted to say that that your some of the songs on the record. Oh, which song was it? I was listening to earlier. It's They're, probably Groove Train, I imagine. Y- yes, but there was one other one as well, and uh, one of them that's featured on your Instagram relatively recently. Um, it might have been that one, but um, I yeah, think, yeah, probably yeah. Because you've got a technique which I never use, which is the sort of the Preston Reed kind of thumpy, fisty <laughs> hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I've always tried to teach that to students in the past, and I'm useless at it because my fingers are like these long. You know, weird. I, I can't condense myself into this kind of thump that he gets, which is amazing. And um, and, and and the guitar on the record. What are you playing on that? Uh, so on that, I'm actually using a couple of different ones. So I've got it's the first Taylor that I ever bought. I bought it second hand at Chicago Music Exchange. Um, oh yeah. And, and I t- I, to be honest, I can't even remember the model of it. To be, it's it's here somewhere. Uh, there's that, and I used a couple two. Breedlove guitars as well because I remember at the time Breedlove sent me a couple of guitars just to check out and I thought you know whilst I have them might as well make use of them so I recorded using two of them can't even remember the models to be quite honest I've, I've got them written down somewhere or pictured somewhere but yeah it's primarily like I think I've got 13 songs on there or 12 but only two of them are Breedlove guitars the rest are with that Taylor right on it does sound like a Taylor I can hear I could totally hear that because I started yeah. on the Taylor as well yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my, that was my first guitar, and um, yeah, uh, shout out to Taylor as well. And you, you do you seem to do a lot of videos with that. Um, you got like a master built kind of thing. Um, the yeah, builder so, series or yeah, yeah. So um, I'll have to give a shout out to Taylor. Taylor have been very good to me. Um, so thank you to that. Um, yeah, they sent me a six fourteen CE. It's, it was the the first year where the V brace came out. That new kind of thing that they were doing. Um, but it was a really comfortable guitar because. I mean, I've never been into too huge of a guitar. I, I like a huge sound because I used to have like a jumbo guitar um, and I loved it, but then I kind of went to the smaller body and it, it made a lot more sense, more comfortable, and I, could, and I could still get you know a really good sound out of it. Um, so that's what I use primarily for my acoustic playing, it's a 614 CE. Um, but I do have a Loudon that is absolutely incredible as well. So Shout Alistair, out to Loudon. Yeah, and uh, Alistair, he, he he let me borrow a loud and um, I can't remember the model. It's it's quite a is it an impressive F? one. It's something fifty. Yeah, but I mean, so, so the loud and body shapes. There's the O, which is the big big boy, and then the F is is the one that a lot of fingerstyle players um, like. You know, uh, Thomas yeah. Lee, I believe, uh, plays an F, and I think that it, 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 classic it might drifting be one of, video is it's, an F. It's that kind of similar shape. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, and it's, it's absolutely incredible. Like, it just sounds like a grand piano. I play a couple of strings, and it just rings out. It's, it's They're amazing guitars, and I actually lived in Downpatrick, Northern Ireland, where they're made for like. Yeah, yeah. Well, I say lived. My girlfriend at the time lived there because she was one of the builders, so she might oh. might well have built your guitar. Maybe. Um, maybe. W- what year was? Did you get it? 
Uh, I got it, I'd say, about three years ago, three and a half years ago. Um, if, it, if it was new then, it's quite possible that my ex kind of built the uh, the body or like uh, oh, put the body together. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, possibly. yeah. Possibly. It's a small Did she write world, a name in it? it? Did she no, write a name in it? No, <laughs> but it, no, I don't, I don't think each member of the team gets to write their name in it. I think that's just a, a George thing. But um, yeah. but no, they're great guitars and great people, and yeah, they're built in Down Patrick, Northern Ireland. Um, yeah, 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 I've never owned one myself, which is crazy because oh, I mean, well. literally all my influences are Loudon players. Yeah, you know, uh, Pierre Ben Susan, his signature Loudon. Um, obviously, the early Andy McKee stuff. Um, those yeah, videos yeah. were done on a on a Loudon. I think he borrowed, you know, uh, amazing guitars. Thomas Lieb, Eric Roche, you know, all these guys. Yeah, so. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to yeah. the Loudon guys in Northern Ireland. Um, they make amazing things. And they just brought out their guitar with Ed Sheeran a relatively recently, did, yeah. a couple of years ago, which is just insane. I remember I was at the NAM, the NAM show and got... Nam. Uh, were you there that year when they launched the Ed Sheeran model? Uh, I think it, that was just last... Wait, wasn't that just uh, last winter? I think it was the one before because... Was it? Yeah, well, I was not there because I was on tour this year and it was must have been the one before. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or at least there was some kind of like press conference, but they they sent out like texts to everybody being like, "Yo, like come and we, we got a special thing announcement." It was I think it yeah. might have been one of the mornings, you know, following a big night of of partying and hanging, but yeah. there was no mention of like what it was because it was a secret. And, yeah, uh, yeah, and then yeah, everyone yeah. found out that Ed Sheeran showed up and, and rocked up and everyone was kind of super bummed to miss it because they were all hung over and didn't know what was going on. Yeah, was going I, I, actually, I actually got invited to that and I yeah. couldn't make it. Yeah. <laughs> Would you believe it? My flight, like I, I didn't get in in time. I was getting in late in the evening. But yeah, because I remember that because that was uh, January last year that they did it. So yeah, you weren't there because you were on tour, right? You were in Alaska or something, weren't you? Oh yeah, but there was a thing... Maybe there was maybe there was an initial announcement and a secondary announcement or something. Maybe I'm getting completely Possibly, confused. Yeah. But yeah, this no, one I, that I, has I just work. gone. This one that has just gone. Um, yeah. I could maybe that was the last Nam ever. Who knows? <laughs> it's, it's looking like it. I mean, it's probably not happening this next time. That's where no, I met you, right? We no. met at Summer Nam. Summer Nam, uh, yeah, uh, be two years ago at least. Mm. Yeah, it's got to be two years. Yeah, with the tone with amp guys. With the tone with amp guys, yeah. Well, I want to I want to talk to you more about this whole Instagram thing, dude, because mm. it's super fascinating. A, a lot of the other guys I've been talking to, you know, we don't touch on the kind of social media thing so much. Yeah, but you're kind of owning it so much that. And first of all, it's a pleasure. <laughs> it's a pleasure to talk to you in landscape. Because oh, yeah, true. This is this you're, never you're known, Yeah, this is the widest <laughs> angle of Nathaniel Murphy, Zeppelin, Bar, and Atra that you've ever seen, yeah, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. I mean, you can see, like, I've got a light in the corner. This is the hallway. This is exactly. the couch here. We've got the TV up there. Exactly. Yeah. Now, now I've been to your place, and I I know the secrets of your rig. <laughs> now, now, when, you know, guitarists love gear, right? We love to just we get, do. get geeky and, and, and get all the accessories, and every company under the sun will tell you that you need their gear. Um, mm -hmm. And... And then you look at someone like Nathaniel here with, you know, who's the king of guitar Instagram. Would you would you like to share your, your rig just so the people yes. know uh, what they need to do? Yeah, so um, I use a cushion. <laughs> okay, that's number one. A cushion to put the Brand. amp on. Yeah. Uh, any, I mean, there's some from Target or Walmart, wherever you want. <laughs> you know, Bob's Furniture down the road. Excellent. Uh, so Shout out. A big poofy cushion uh, to put on the floor. So your amp can go on it so the neighbours won't complain because that has happened plenty of times in the past. Because you're in a um, flat. You're in a flat. I live in a flat, yeah. Um, so big cushion for that. That always helps. Um, the amps that I use, you know, it's not like a Dumble or something crazy. Uh, I use a Roland Street Cube that I got in Manchester and brought over here with me years ago. Shout out. Uh, and I use a Fishman acoustic amp as well. So they're the two amps. So I'll prop them on the cushion. Um, I'll use a candle to prop my phone up to. Okay, so the, can to. the candle is, is on or off? It's lit or? Uh, it depends, depends. If it's, a, it's, if it's like a cloudy day outside, I'll turn it on, you know. Okay. Um, and I'll lean the phone up against that. You know, it, it's, it's usually, I usually go for the Yankee candle because they're, you know, they're quite robust. You know, they're okay, not so fall back anyway. do you think the Yankee candle provides better tone in some capacity? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Very okay. resonant as well, yeah. you know. Um, I also use a couple of books to prop up the phone against the candle or a couple of pedals to create a cable valley for the microphone to go into the uh, 
into <laughs> to the farm. People are going to think this is a piss take. They'll think I'm winding them up. It's not. Oh. Um, but yeah, that's what I basically use. I mean, I've, I've actually progressed now. I've got a gooseneck that I can use, you know, to hold the phone up. Oh, you um, actually so, bought some something like yeah. this with more to it, like a little exactly. generic, yeah, a little generic phone stand. So that's the thing. So you managed to create an Instagram empire without a phone stand, or literally using a candle to pro- to hold my phone up against, a couple of books to prop it up, and a cushion and an amp for years, for years. So only within the past maybe six months. That I stopped using the candle. And the once, you, once, and the once you got to once you got to like three hundred thousand Instagram followers, you're like, you know, maybe I, maybe I should maybe, maybe I should, I should splash uh, out on a, yeah. on a on a phone stand. It's it's ridiculous, really. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm kind of proud of it in one way, you know, because dude, I, I get bombarded with questions as to what gear I use, and you know, you know, you must have the best gear in the world. It's like, no, you you don't really need it to be quite honest. You, you, know? you know, you know what I think. Go on. Then. I think that the key to your uh, success on this platform is actually your playing. Oh, well, thank you, man. And not, not the gear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the. I do miss the candle and the cushion. I still use the cushion. I'll be honest. I, I still use that. I have to. You know, yeah. No choice. Maybe you but, should do um, a, a throwback series one day with the original, the original <laughs> rig. You know, bring the old rig, rig out. But that's the thing. No one would believe me. I, I used to say it. At the shop at Chicago Music Exchange, like some of them would ask, "Oh, well, how do you record your videos?" I'd show them a picture, and they'd laugh. They start laughing, ha ha ha. Okay, show me the real one. It's like, no, that is what I've been using. Oh know? yeah. So that's, I, that's I've seen it. Seen it. it with my own eyes. You have. You it have. was crazy when I was round. That was when coronavirus like happened, pretty much, right? Because yeah, when when were you here? Was it March? Yeah, because I remember we went to the cinema to see nineteen seventeen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whenever that came out, that's when you were here, yeah. But it was empty. It was just because, me and you, wasn't it? Yeah, because there was like this virus. Yeah. That, yeah. So it must, it, must have, it must have literally been then. Yeah. Yeah. But Sorry, go on. Yeah, but I mean, at that time, obviously nothing was shut down or, you know, we didn't know the full extent of what was going to happen or come to be, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 crazy, but I mean, all the more time yeah. for you to make uh make music videos, which has been amazing to watch. Especially, I must I must shout out to my favorite clip of yours, which is the uh, the Queen. Um, oh, that yeah, crazy little thing. Oh, that yeah, that was a- that's wicked. When I saw that, that I, it just brought a huge smile to my face as well. Um, all all this stuff, man. Like honestly, I just really implore everyone to go and follow. You know, fo- follow Nathaniel on Instagram because, oh, like you. I said, it's like it's like a balanced diet of all things guitar. <laughs> <laughs> a balanced diet, I like it. I yeah, like it. because it's 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 all genres as well. So that's another thing, man. I mean, you're you're pri- you would consider yourself primarily a fingerstyle player, but you've got all the chops in the other styles. Is that it, it, you know well, how? Well, I mean, I I, I just. I mean, I've always loved playing the guitar and loved listening to different guitarists and even just different musicians who aren't guitarists and trying to steal from them. You know, I remember when I when I first started, or maybe a year or so into playing, I remember my mom saying, um, you know, oh, you got to cater for everyone's style. You know, got to try and play this style and this style. And I don't know why that stuck with me, and I don't know why she said it, because you know she's never played an instrument. Um, <laughs> but that kind of stuck with me, and then. I love exploring different genres and styles. Now, I mean, I do get a lot of people saying, oh, yeah, you can play, you know, different styles and stuff. I mean, I I think of it this way. Like, imagine being able to say a few sentences in different languages, but if the, if the person you're chatting to goes off on another tangent, then, you know, I'd be repeating the same thing. You know, if so, the other person okay. could be talking about shopping, I could be talking about a train or something, you know? So, so, that's, so that's an interesting point because... You know, hearing you, you know just what sort I mean, of, though, right? Well, I, I know what you mean, but I it, it appears from the outside and from just you know hanging with you for a bit in Chicago that you know you are much more fluent in these other languages, you say, than you let on. But I completely relate <laughs> to how you, I completely relate to how you feel about yeah, that. Yeah. You know, so so the tour I was just on when we met was the International Guitar Night tour, and that was with Cenk Erdogan from Istanbul and Oli Soykili from from Finland. And yeah. Oli is just a absolutely phenomenal one of the best in the world. This kind of jazz, gypsy jazz kind of all mm. things shred guy. 
Um, yeah. And he is that he's completely fluent in that language. But then, you know, I see you upload clips like you did the other day um, on the arch top that you were playing. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah. It, and it, lo- it looks to me that you're speaking the same language. And, and I think there's a voice in in people's heads when they consume these short clips, which are, say, riffs rather than full songs, which, yeah. you know, they might tell themselves, oh, yeah, but I bet he's just doing... I bet he's just rehearsed 30 seconds of, of music and then that's the end of it. But I, mm. I do genuinely feel that you are more fluent in those languages than you than you say. Or, or, or is it, or do you literally feel that? Is, is that your process that you will just think, you know, this week I want to upload a country clip, so I'm just going to just gonna, you know, start from zero and build up this one awesome mm. section and then upload that? Like, how does that work? I mean, it's a, it's a bit of both, really. Like, I've always wanted to be you know, f- fluent in lots of styles or, you know, at least attempt to do it. Um, but I, I just love trying to play different, you know, genres and styles. I mean, it's basically, if I like the sound of something I don't know, and I don't know how to play it, you know, I want to try and learn it and try and incorporate it into my playing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll go through like phases. Like di- at the moment, I'm kind of on a gypsy jazz kind of thing. Um, I just love it. I mean, I, I remember hearing... A lot of it when I was about 16 or 17, uh, Borelli Legren, and um, again, here's my northern accent pronouncing, you know, French gypsy jazz guitarist, uh, Borelli, Legren, <laughs> Borelli Legren and Stachello Rosenberg, or Stachello Rosenberg, you know, you know who I mean. Um, I remember hearing them and being blown away, so I've always had that kind of thing in the back of mind where I'd love to do more gypsy jazz. But um, at the moment, it's, uh, it's a lot of Angelo Debar is his name, uh, absolutely outrageous. Uh, gypsy jazz but then next week I'll be on to a Brent Mason kind of country guitar thing and then the week after that it'll be you know some finger style stuff it's which is it's kind of helped me out because I've got to dabble you know take bits from here yeah. and there of these styles um, but yeah I would never consider myself a master of all these styles far from it you know I'd, well, so, so I mean, well, well elaborating on that a little bit so um you know you have the one record which is a finger style album have you ever thought about you know do you have repertoire that is you know uh, s- several full pieces in all these different styles or or is it just sort of licks and, and and learning the language still at this point uh i do i do have like riffs and kind of a uh, song ideas prepared i haven't got around to recording them but for the most part it would be the latter i think you know like bits that I've learned and I've pieced together and that I want to include, you know, um, for videos, maybe riffs or something like that, or little solos here and there, you know? Yeah, it would be awesome. It would be awesome to hear, you know, uh, a diverse discography of your 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 styles in the future in, yeah. in these you oh. know in these different genres just to completely confuse people at the merch table at shows you know well that's 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 well I mean no one would listen to it like you get someone who'd be into it for one song yeah I like this song but the rest I don't like because I'm not into that and then someone else would be like oh well I like this one but the rest is crap don't, well then you just you know? tour the world doing guitar clinics <laughs> you know and, and just keep it going in different scenes and different styles it's it's really it's it's you know i really meant what i said earlier on when you know i see a lot of people playing in different styles but you really seem to be like nailing it and there's another player called josh meter oh, who you. i've been this play called yeah oh. jo- josh meter i've been following i think he's in australia um he's, he's australian he's he's about 15 by the looks of it what? and he's just no no he's, he's a bit older obviously but he's, he's young <laughs> Yeah. But he's, I mean, he's, he is astonishing how hmm. good he is, right? There's there's a bunch of crazy guitar players coming out of Australia. Like, absolutely insane Australian guitar players. Obviously, there's, you know, Pliny, um, who's who's got a new yeah. album out, um, probably out now by the time this comes out. Um, and uh, and Stephen Tarant... I, I, oh, I yeah. I don't know if Jesus. I'm pronouncing his name right. Taranto? I, I, know, I, know, I know the one you mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who's just an absolute freak, an absolute freak in the nicest in the nicest way. Never met the guy. Yeah. Um, just incredible guitar player. But it, it's really interesting that you found this this niche, or it appears to be a niche, or it's a growing thing. I'm sure on Instagram doing these portrait, very organic looking <laughs> home style. I just woke up like this. Hashtag no makeup <laughs> kind of videos. Do you do you see this being where music consumption is going? Like, do you see albums? You know, from your point of view and the success that you've had on that platform, do you see albums mm. having the same worth in the, the traditional format versus just a regular, you know, riff-based system of 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 pieces? I don't know, to be honest. I mean, 
obviously it's always changing and evolving, but uh, what, do you mean music to be kind of more just on social media? Or? Well, I, f- I feel like a lot of people may be listening to this and, and certainly myself and my own mind in 2020 not being able to tour you start Mm. asking yourself well how do i get my material out there and how do i get my material seen and it seems to be that there is this new opportunity to just you know draw people into your musical world through tiny tiny clips rather than full songs when back when i you know um started putting stuff on youtube in like 2012 with with candy rat it was very much still you know, this is a three and a half minute song music video and those things would kind of get shared around and go viral and the algorithms were very favorable for that kind of thing. Whereas yeah. now it seems, you know, all, all, all the tech platforms um, seem to really favor these high engagement short clips, which really, really favor, you know, people with your skill set, which is, you know, diverse skills, multiple genres, bish, bash, bosh, quick, very, very awesome things. But But I feel like it's, it's very hard to, or it's very hard to encourage someone to spend ten times as many hours oh, yeah. doing a full piece and then upload that and have it kind of sink like a dead duck. You know, uh, yeah. I'm really curious talking to people like you who who have that kind of regular output because you know you can have a regular output when you're not spending the time writing a four minute tune. You know, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, and I'm just really curious as to how you think about the future of you and your output. And uh, the decisions you'll make according to the feedback you've had on what you've done. Does yeah. that make sense? Well, I mean, Sorry to ramble. No, no, I, I, I kind of know what you mean. I mean, it's, it's unfair, really, with what you mentioned there. Like, someone's gone to the f- trouble of doing like a full four minute video, you know, putting so much effort and time into it. And then, you know, it, like you said, it sinks like a stone. It, it, it's such a shame for that to happen. And I'm sure it does. You know, it, it's, you know, I've, I've kind of recorded videos that I've spent an incredible amount of time learning. And, you know, doesn't go anywhere, doesn't do anything. Um, and in terms of, like, kind of to get your music out there, I, th- I think Instagram is a huge thing and social media in general, but how how will it filter out from the rest of the stuff that's out there? That's, for me, is the tricky thing, and I don't really have an answer for that. Well, hello there, everyone. Apologies for the interruption to the podcast, but I did want to tell you about the amazing Tonewood Amp, the awesome sponsors of the show. Many of you will know already that I use this thing all the time, the magical little device that sticks with magnets to the back of your acoustic guitar, vibrates the back surface of the instrument so that reverb, delay, chorus, Leslie speaker effects, and other loveliness project out of the sound hole as if by magic. You're a wizard. I'm a what? You can head to Mike Dawes Has a Podcast com now to get more information about the Tonewood amp as well as saving a tasty percentage for yourself. Let's get right back to it. So you found so you found this success on Instagram, but you're still it sounds like you're still uncertain as to how to take that and take it further into the world. Yeah. Yeah, I mean essentially, well, how I started out on Instagram. I mean, I suppose I'll start from there. Like I'd I'd be out busking on the street with uh, the street down on Michigan Ave- with the street cube you know it. Oh, yeah. um, so I'd, I'd hop on the train, I'd go downtown, I'd, I'd go busking. And I remember there was one particular day, um, there was a guy filming me. I mean, obviously you get people filming from time to time, but yeah, he was filming me and I was got I got chatting with him. Um, and I had like a, you know, like a business card. It just said Nathaniel Murphy, guitarist, email and number on it. Um, and anyway, I started getting emails of people saying, oh, I love your videos on Instagram. And I'm thinking, well, hang on, I'm not on Instagram, you know, so what's going on here? Because um, at the time, this was kind of early days for Instagram, I assume. Mm. And at, the, at that time, it was very naive of me because I thought it was just like, you know, pictures of food or selfies or, you know, just touristy kind of stuff. And I wasn't, you know, it wasn't really for me. But I went on and, you know, I found a few videos of myself on there that people have put up, um, nothing huge or anything. And I thought, you know, well, post some videos of myself playing and you know see what happens and you know the feedback started to get good and they started to snowball and over time I started to do more and more now as to where I can take it I'm not too sure to be honest because my whole attitude is I'm trying to think of it as a business card so to speak my Instagram profile um not not to like make money or anything because let me tell everyone who's listening to this I don't make a single penny off Instagram 
you know. Okay, so I got to I got to stop you there because that yeah. is incredibly surprising. No, I, I'm not winding you up. I do not make a single penny off the videos that I make on Instagram or the views. Not people gonna, again. People might think I'm lying. <laughs> Trust me, I'm not. I mean, I, I've had opportunities to, you know, Fender have reached out to me and Gibson and stuff like that and Taylor. You know, so I've been very lucky in that sense. So I might get the odd guitar here and there, you know, for free or, you know, to do a video with and then send it back. Um, but in terms of, like, actually paying the bills, you know, it do doesn't help towards that. And it wouldn't be all about the money anyway because, I mean, back to what I was going to say is I've always wanted it to be like a business car to where I'd love to do, like, session work, you know, and be someone's sideman traveling around the world, you know. I've yeah. said that before. I, I would absolutely love to do that, you know, to, to travel the world playing the guitar to audiences, you know, that, that would be the dream for me, you know, and, you know, hopefully it might work out one day, you know. Well, absolutely. I mean, you've probably got the greatest business card out there right now uh, in terms of the diversity of your output and, you know, your your lovable character, which you are so have, have revealed during this session here. <laughs> but that's really interesting. And, you know, it seems that you've got totally the right approach, which is, you know, get as much stuff out there of, of, of consistently high quality. And from from my experience, that does work in getting those kind of gigs. Obviously, one person's anecdotal experience doesn't really doesn't really help, and it shouldn't be taken as yeah. gospel. But you know, I, I've been as, as as well as the solo stuff, um, working with the frontman of the Moody Blues since you yeah. know 2013, and that that actually didn't come from a video. It it came from a shit gig, believe it or not. Actually, but yeah, it was, I think you, yeah, I think you told me about this before. That's it's incredible though. Yeah, I, I don't know if I've I've mentioned this story on any of these these episodes yeah. yet, but basically what happened is I played the worst gig of my life and one of the other acts on that bill four years later recommended me to to Justin Haywood. Um however, when they were able to when the organization were able to look at the metrics and say, okay, well this guy has a bit of a following by himself, those things totally help in getting those kind of gigs. So it would be really interesting for people to understand that, like put using social media as a business card rather than trying to monetize it as its own thing. It's the residual opportunities that that turn it into a business and turn it into a sustainable thing. And, and you know, touring, you know, personally, touring has been the number one source of income by far, which is why 2020 is yeah. so, so kind of uh, crazy. But, you know, I think what will happen in the future, and you'll probably end up kicking yourself, is that there will be a way for people to directly monetize viral Instagram uh, videos. Because yeah. on every other platform that has happened, it's just taken time. Like, yeah. I think the um, I did a video of one by Metallica, on, yeah. and it went viral on Facebook. But it was only a year later that they started counting those kind of views as UK chart metrics. Oh wow. So so and I did the math and it turns out that that would have been a top 10 single in the UK. Jesus. But it's nothing because <laughs> it was a, a year earlier than they introduced that system. So oh, you know and, it, and and it's the it's the same with adverts. I mean advertising on videos on Facebook is only really just rolling out now whereas this video came yeah. out in 2017 and I think in total on the uploads it was like 100 million views, right? So yeah, 100 yeah. million views mean nothing and I'll tell you for anyone listening you know, I, I do have tab for that arrangement, but no one bought that tab. Like you have a hundred million views and you're advertising the tab sales and yeah. you, you very quickly realize that if you're having a viral video, it's, you know, spoilers, there aren't a hundred million guitar players watching it. It's mostly just general population people yeah. who think it's cool. Right. Yeah. That's just the way it yeah. is. That's, you know, you can't have a viral thing within the guitar community. That's that's a, a that's an oxymoron, you know, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really it doesn't really work. Um, so what was interesting to me was that experience trying to monetize something that was massive on a platform that couldn't directly monetize itself versus having a video with, say, like one million views out with Guitar World magazine and then selling yeah. loads of tab because their audience is just guitar players. Right. So yeah, yeah. it seems that there's going to come a point, you know, soon where the 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 future Nathaniel Murphy might just be like, <laughs> "Fuck! I wish I started now," you know. Yeah. Which, which well, I mean, which, that's, that's the thing. You know. I've I've had people ask, "Well, how do you how do you monetize videos, or what can you do?" It's like well, I don't know. You know, yeah. I genuinely don't know. I mean, have you do you, any idea how 
it would get monetized because I I don't really well, know. Well, I think I think you're doing the. I mean, again, I'm no expert on Instagram because my Instagram in the past because I was always. Well, ne- neither am I now, by the way. Well, I, I, okay. Don't be don't be fooled by the numbers. I just put up videos. That's literally all I do. But this is another reason I wanted to talk to you because I wanted people to understand the man behind the clips. And you're clearly <laughs> just a humble guy who just does his thing and it's the playing and the fact that you're a great player which is making this stuff work. So cut out oh, all the you, all man. no you cut out all the bullshit and the how do I which time of the day do I release my video to get maximum exposure? <laughs> it's like, mate, just be <laughs> sick. If you're just really sick, then it's fine. Um yeah. then you know. But um God, I completely forgot what uh, were you asking? You were asking yeah, me something. How, how, I mean, how how could how could we, or how is it going to be possible to monetize those? Type yeah. Of videos? So so with Instagram in the past, I'd always just used it as a tour diary. You know, since day one when yeah. it was released as an app, it was just an open diary. So my my yeah. Instagram's just pictures of me backstage with my mates just doing stupid stuff. So I, I definitely <laughs> don't have a lot of guitar content, which is really really silly in in hindsight. But I think what you're doing in terms of, you know, gaining massive exposure for yourself and your, um, you know, what you can do is absolutely the right thing to do, you know, because it is a portfolio. It's a digital Mm. portfolio. You know, I hate to say it, but maybe if it was called like Nathaniel Murphy instead of, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But no, I've honestly, I have contemplated doing that. I did so many times, but there's, but you know, there's like you then just gotta then you gotta just like own it, you know. So you, you, it, it's True. it's it's so. For example, there was one player who I spoke to recently, very well known guitar player, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna interview Nathaniel Murphy, and they were like, yeah. Uh, I, I know the name, but I can't place it. And I was <laughs> I said, oh, he's he's Zeppelin thingy, and it was like, oh, that guy's sick, you know. So. There's 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 something there which is is gonna have to be navigated at some point. I'm know, sure. That, but I've, honestly, it's I've I've thought about that so often because it's like you said that we're, uh, we've had to explain what that name means, where it came from, how to actually how to actually say the name, what my real name is. So there's a lot to it. I, I, I know exactly. But, what but you at the mean, same honestly. time, your name is not your your name doesn't matter if someone knows if someone wants to hire that guy they're going to reach out to that guy and they're going to know where to find him so it doesn't actually yeah. for what your goals are i don't think it actually matters that much because if someone you know someone say ariana grande needs a new guitar player or something they're like oh yeah let's get that guy on instagram very easy to find you very easy to dm yeah. you yeah. you know what yeah. i mean I think yeah. almost just keeping you to Instagram like that is actually really good because then you just become you become known for it. You become the Instagram well, guy, which gets you uh, that um, ease of access to people. You know, people will yeah, know where I to mean, find you. That's I mean that's what I've tried to focus on, like just just focusing on the Instagram thing because I, I get a lot of people asking, "Oh, do you do the full YouTube videos?" And not really, um, not out of you do have a YouTube per- channel though. I do, but I don't. I don't post very often on it i mean i've got a decent number of subscribers um i mean if you to type my name in on youtube a lot of videos come up from chicago music exchange uh from a lot of the demo videos that i do there you know um but yeah I've, I've, i should really start doing more kind of full-length youtube videos people would like it i'd like to do it so it's, it's a matter of time i don't have the equipment this is it i've got a cushion <laughs> and an amp i ain't got a camera i ain't got a light I've okay. got a candle, so- for God's sake. S- Sony. <laughs> Sony and Rode and Sennheiser send Nathaniel yeah. loads of stuff and uh, get this man a setup. Uh, wouldn't yeah, that be I'll funny if back. you got... Yeah, w- wouldn't, wouldn't that be amazing <laughs> if you got like 10 grand's worth of gear and suddenly your, your views fell off a cliff? <laughs> Man, you know. that, that would happen to me, though. That's, that's the type of thing that would happen. Well, then, you know, there's another beautiful thing about your videos, which is that it's clearly, clearly just a guy playing guitar. And there's no bullshit. There's no, yeah. you know, post processing or anything like that. You know, you can hear the ambience in your room, and and you can hear your fingers, and you, you know, it's it's a, it's a beautiful thing. So oh, I, I I do feel like there is a lot to be said for um, unpolished product. You know, really resonating with people. I, I have um, multiple videos of uh, a John Mayer cover I do called "Slow Dancing in a Burning Room," and by far the mm-hmm. most successful ones are the shitty live ones. And yeah. it's, this, it's the same with the Gautier thing that you mentioned earlier. Like, the biggest video for that is just some crappy live bootleg that I despise. It's like my most popular <laughs> video on YouTube. It's not. It's on some music 
venue school's channel. It's not even yeah, on my channel. Yeah, uh, the the cathedral, right? Yeah, it's literally down the road. So yeah. you know, you know the movie Hot Fuzz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's where they filmed Hot Fuzz in in, oh, in, in, in Wells, which is just basically down the street from my parents. So that gig, it's a beautiful venue um, yeah. as part of a, a private school there. it's If you've seen the movie Hot Fuzz, you can imagine countryside private school, right? <laughs> so I played there because, you know, well, it's a great venue, but it's tied in with the community. So they had this concert of their students, like, you know, th- their end of year student showcase, and they asked me to come in and like, quote unquote headline it you know and it yeah, was yeah, really yeah. sweet and uh, really fun and then and i'm like okay you know it's 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 this will be a really fun little gig but didn't really think anything else of it and then they they sent me this live bootleg and said do you want to upload this on your channel and i said no it's shit do what you want with it but i hate it <laughs> and then it's gone like kind of crazy uh, and you know it, it's it's the same with um yeah I, I released a live album recently and, and one of the videos from that is is taken off and and that's my least favorite one you know maybe it's too may- typical in it yeah may- maybe i'm just a really really poor judge of of what's good and what's not i shouldn't say that because i i really i'm singing your praises throughout this, <laughs> this whole thing. i'm just going to say yeah you've killed me there aren't you <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, I, I know what you mean though i know what you mean it's, it's uh, yeah it, it's it's i don't know i just think the ho- the whole the whole thing is really cool but we should also talk about um chicago music exchange yeah um as well because this is yeah this is for people who don't know is it is it the biggest music store in america uh i don't know if it's the biggest like independent um, you know it, it it must be yeah the biggest independent i i assume so um but it is it's absolutely incredible um like just the array of guitars that they've got, the quality of them, the acoustics, the electrics, it's the boutique builders as well. They've got a Les Paul wall, which is probably, the, I don't even know how, how wide it is, it's incredible. Um, but yeah, I'm, I am in a very fortunate position to do a lot of demo videos with them. You know, so I'm very fortunate to have done that. And how that came about was I'd go in from time to time um, you know, I'd play a few of the guitars and I got to know one of the guys in the acoustic room, Carl Neurauer is his name. Um, and we got friendly and he said, look, would you like to do some demo vi- uh, videos with us? You know, uh, and I was like, yeah, of course, you know, I'd be honored. Um, and I started doing a few and th- then I got to chat with the owner, Andrew Yonke, and he wanted me to do them a little bit more often, you know, so maybe a couple of times a week. And yeah, I'm, I'm very gracious and very uh, humbled to do videos for what I consider to be probably the best guitar shop out there that I've been to, certainly that I've been to. You know, it it, it really is something special uh, because you were very gracious to give me a little tour of it um, when I uh, when I came over to Chicago, um, and it really is amazing. It's it's pretty big. Um, it's it's, yeah, it's pretty yeah. damn big. And uh, did I meet Carl there? Um, in the acoustic, you did, room. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. I think actually that was when I got an edit in for a music video, and I had to see yeah. it, and, and then we got to watch yeah. it on the thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> man, so many memories. And Jenk was yeah. there as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah th- this story is amazing. In fact, another story about Chicago Music Exchange. On a previous tour with Justin Haywood, um, midway through the tour, he decided to add a mood, uh, like a, a, a song of his called "Blue Guitar," um, and he plays electric on it. And then he suddenly decided that I need a 12 string and I have to play a 12 string to accompany him for the yeah. show tomorrow. <laughs> uh, and we had a day off in Chicago. So he was just like t- to Chris, uh, to T-Rope, our guitar tech, just like, here's, here's, the, here's the credit card, go to Chicago Music Exchange yeah. and get my 12 string. So we just rocked up and <laughs> we managed to find a beautiful, uh, I think it was a, a pre-owned uh, guild. Uh, no, maybe, oh, it wasn't, okay. maybe it wasn't a guild. Honestly, Honestly, I can't remember. No, I think it was a guild. You know this this yeah. this, this big old beast. So and yeah, the the, the stuff there were really really you know accommodating, but this mm. place is incredible. There's a place in the UK, down in a town called Farnham, uh, that I I used to work at actually called Guitar Village. Have you heard of Guitar Village? Uh, I'm not sure I have. Hmm. I believe that's the UK's equivalent of Chicago Music Exchange. You know, oh. it's it's the biggest you know guitar store, guitar specific store. 
actually in in the country. It's pretty close to Guildford where Anderton's is, but they yeah, just yeah. they just deal in guitars and it's beautiful. I got uh, many guitars over the years from there. So shout out to the people at Guitar Village. But so this Chicago Music Exchange connection would explain why you are constantly playing multiple different guitars. And your yeah. f- your flat is a finite <laughs> size, yet you appear <laughs> to have like a hundred guitars. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, you've been to my place. It's a it's a small flat. I live in a small place. Um, but great yeah, acoustics. a lot of people. Great acoustics, exactly. Um, yeah, I've, I've I'm lucky that they they let me borrow a lot of the guitars. You know, um, for, for a couple of reasons. I mean, one just to get familiar with the guitar so when I go in maybe the next day and do an actual demo video of it I kind of know the ins and outs of the guitar to an extent instead of just going in there cold um, also just you know I, I get to use them on my own channel which is really cool because there's guitars that I'll never be able to afford that I get to play and you know I'm very lucky to be able to do that I mean I've had some incredible guitars from there that I've been able to play oh, and yeah. I've got to, to meet a lot of great people there and a lot of people I've seen my videos with them. For example, um, Rick Nielsen of Cheap Trick. I saw um, that. Uh, yesterday, I think I saw something uploaded um, uh, about that oh, on, onto YouTube, I think. Yeah, yeah. For, uh, just at the drop of a hat, I thought, you know, I'll just put that video on there. Because someone else took that video and put it on their YouTube page. It's like half a million views. I was like, oh, well, oh, maybe my I should. God. Dude. Uh, you see? You see? Dude, I, you I, see? I, I feel the pain. I, you see? I feel the pain. With, with with credit, did you get credit at least? Yeah, they've put my name on it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. There's so that helps so much. It helps so oh, much. Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I remember I was doing a live Instagram video, which never happens. I think I've done like four or five ever. Because I don't know, I've never really got into it. Um, and I remember I was playing, and Rick Nielsen's name popped up at the bottom, and he was talking. Oh, hey, love you playing want to get in contact or something I was like oh, wow. is this really him you know I thought it was a wind up to be quite honest um, dude you are so damn out- humble you are so damn you're either super humble or just like really <laughs> suspicious just, or just like really dumb you know <laughs> like it's, just it's think everyone probably, everything's not real <laughs> probably dumb to be honest um, but yeah he he reached out he, he got my number from the guys at the shop and he said oh you know because I'd like you to see some of the guitars that I've got you know take someone with you and play them and I couldn't believe it, you know, it's Rick Nielsen of Cheap Trick. Uh, he, he's not too far, it's like an hour and a half in uh, Rockford. But um, yeah, he was very gracious to let me borrow some of his guitars and some of the guitars he's got. Is, uh, well, he's, he's known as a collector anyway, but he's got like a, uh, a 51 telly, which I'm not even sure it's technically called a telly. It'd probably be a no-caster or broadcaster, I don't know what it's called. Well, it's the best, the best telly I'll probably ever play. Oh yeah? Better than the um, uh, better than the crazy one when I was around that had no. Uh, it was like half a telly. It was like so oh, sliced. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that oh, the shop got a lot of heat for that guitar. Some people really? loved it. Some yeah. Well, it was a seventies telly, so it was actually fine. It just looked weird because someone had taken a chunk out of it. But the neck was great, sounded great, pickups were great. You know. Um, but yeah, that that fifty one telly was incredible, and he's got a black Gibson EMS twelve thirty five double neck. That's uh, the one black. I saw. Yeah, that's the one. So there's only I think two of them ever made, I believe, in black, uh, and it's, it's unbelievable. So these it's, are two. These are two. These are two six string necks, but one of them is is like is half half the length or something. Half the length. So I've, it's tuned a, a full octave up. So it's actually really cool. You can get some great ideas out of. Uh, when, when you know you can either try and play both at the same time which I've, I've done or you can kind of switch back and forth but it's a great guitar but yeah just uh, very thankful to Rick Nielsen as well as Chicago Music Exchange for letting me uh, play their guitars shout know? out to Rick Nielsen and Chicago Music Exchange and uh, yes. spe- speaking of people you know seeing your stuff I noticed the other day that Tommy Lee was sharing your, your stuff out of, out of nowhere it. Yeah. I couldn't believe it madness <laughs> that isn't it yeah, I was over the moon at that because um, I, I didn't know um, someone was uh, shared no someone sent me his stories on Instagram I was like what's this I go on it and it's Tommy Lee but of course didn't put my name in didn't you know say yeah, hey this is yeah. Oh. But yeah, yeah wasn't it because I saw it on his story because I just follow him on Instagram and I just happened to see his story and but it wasn't a shared 
post. It was just a re-upload with no link click-through kind of thing, yeah, there's right? Yeah, no, I think it, it looked like it was, you know, when you can screen record on your phone and maybe oh, minimize yeah. it because yeah. because it was very close into my face. There was barely any guitar. <laughs> so he went, he went uh, out of his way to, like, hide your identity. Yeah. It was like, yeah. look, Cheers. it's my it's my son. <laughs> Cheers, Tommy. <laughs> no, shout, well, I know Tommy Lee is uh, he's uh, he's done a lot of sharing of John Gom stuff in the past as well. So he's definitely like oh, aware right. aware of the genre and the scene and probably yeah. digs it. I've n- I never crossed paths with him, but yeah, shout out to Tommy Lee for sharing Nathaniel's video. Just uh, yes, you know, Thank little you. little at tag goes a long way. Bro, didn't um, <laughs> I remember seeing a while back? Didn't uh, didn't James Hetfield share the link of your one cover? Supposedly, while? yeah, yeah. So um. Yeah, that I mean that particular cover, like everyone was sharing it in the metal world. Yeah, yeah so, l- so lots of well, I mean it's it's a metal thing, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I yeah, start yeah, yeah. I started that arrangement like twelve years ago. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, like it's the wow. same with the Van Halen jump thing that I did recently. Like they, they were all started like a really long time ago, and then you get to a point and you're just like, no, I'm never gonna. I don't have the chops. This is. Yeah, and then you just press pause well, on it and then revisit it, you know, many yeah, years I mean, later. It's strange that because I mean I started working on an arrangement yesterday of uh, Fleetwood Mac's Everywhere. Oh, nice! Uh, trying to trying to incorporate with two necks though, um, and the, the doubts creep in at certain points, and I'm sure you'll agree where. Oh, dude, yeah. It's like you know this. There's a lot missing here. I mean, am I going to play? Am I just going to try and arrange sixty percent of the song just for the sake of it, and miss out this part and this part? And it's like, and I'm sure you'll agree is, I I I personally don't like to miss parts out of the song. You know, um, that's just me personally. But I mean, you'll be sat at home trying to figure it out, and it's like, oh, I'm not too sure about this. Maybe put it away, revisit it again. You know, that's it's, that's uh, exactly what happened with the Metallica thing because you get to the end and you've got to do the chugging and like there's yeah. no way to do that without looping it if you're going to play the solo. But you know, yeah. the it it is tricky. But you're in a situation where you don't need to worry about that. If your medium is a thirty second clip, you can just pick a clip that does work from a song. But of True. course, if you want to, if you want to, you know, like on the album, there's a great arrangement of "Come as You Are," which I absolutely love, by the way. Oh, you know, it's you. super tasteful, and 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 there's another Fleetwood Mac one on there as well. As, as uh, I did, Little Lies. Yeah, yeah. One. But Little you know, lies, and yeah. those are of course full songs. And you know, this is something that people people ask a lot at workshops and lessons and things. It's how do you choose songs to arrange? And That's, it is it, it, is it it is a hard, a really hard thing because yeah. And, and I guess it there's one metric to gauge it by is how much do you care about doing the full thing because like the Van Halen thing that I did recently it, I spent like two days just on the solos right yeah because it's really hard but if it was it was have, incredible by the way oh thanks oh yeah I was really nervous about releasing that but that's that's a different story but um <laughs> yeah the um if if I'd have released that onto YouTube and wherever you know I'm taking that as an example because it's recent not not because that was done to like blow up or anything yeah but, yeah, yeah but how much would it have actually made a difference to a listener if the solo was in there or not you know um it would it be five percent of the people would have been put off by it or would it have ruined yeah. the whole flow of the piece would it have not translated live i mean eric roche's version which it's very inspired by doesn't really contain the solo at all um it's just a rock inversion and and i see a lot of a lot of music online like fingerstyle covers where someone will attempt a crazy section like that, and myself included, 100%. And it just doesn't really work, but they've made the effort to do it. And and I'm looking at it like, this doesn't sound good. Why did you do that? And and they're putting themselves under pressure to do it because they feel obliged to. So there's a, yeah, you know, yeah. there's an internal debate everyone has to have with themselves about that. You know, when you say the Gautier song, I mean, very fortunately, that's a three chord song in the key of D minor. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty hard not to, not to... <laughs> You know, mess that up. Well, let's, but, not, let's not de- let's not diminish your arrangement of it. It is incredible. Well, well what I'm what I'm saying, what I'm saying is like harmonically, it's very straightforward to arrange in the tuning that it was in. Whereas the Van Halen song, it modulates in the solo. Oh yeah, it's madness. So it's yeah. absolute madness, exactly. And there's some songs I've done that haven't been released before. I did an arrangement of "This Love" by Maroon Five years ago that never saw the light of day, just because oh, yeah. I, you know it was all done. 
and I recorded it in the studio, but then I listened back and was like, you know what? There's just one thing in there that just isn't quite right. And then I went away on tour and then over the years I forgot how to play it and it's probably lost in the ether, you know, this recording. But um, but it is an interesting thing and I do kind of envy people like you who can technically just not worry about those bits, you know, if you're, if you're using uh, Instagram as the medium. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting that you say when people ask you how do you arrange songs or where, where do you get the idea to arrange this certain song instead of this certain song and it's it, it can be as simple as just being in the car one day and whatever comes on spotify and you hear the different parts of the song and you think oh shit you know that could be an idea that hence the uh the fleetwood mac everywhere with the with the intro the yeah you, so you, think, you get the spark from a riff and then exactly you, then you have to like research the song by listening to it and try and imagine how you're going to approach it, and then you tackle it, and then you work with the tunings and things like that. Exactly, exactly. Because, I mean, after, like, that that Queen, the crazy little thing called Love uh, arrangement that I'd done, for for a long time I was thinking, well, is there another similar song? But, well, not, I don't want to do something, you know, exactly the same, but something in that same kind of vein where there's a good bass line going on as the same, with the same time as the vocals and, you know, there's little cool parts. And it was either stuff that has you know already been done, like for example, like all I could keep thinking about was Lady Madonna, hmm. uh, the Beatles. But I think Tommy Emmanuel does that, and you know, if he's done it, I'm not touching it. Um, <laughs> Shit. This, yeah, the, the, Tommy has kind of made some yeah. songs just uncoverable. Yeah, because... <laughs> just just walk away, man. Just admire his and walk away. <laughs> um, but yeah, th- I found myself doing that, like trying to research great bass lines with vocals at the same time, and it's like. You know, you just give up. Sometimes if you're trying to look for it, it'll never come. Whereas there's times where, like I said, you could just be in the, in, in the car listening to the radio and it'll come. Like I did an arrangement. It wasn't the greatest arrangement, um, but of uh, Happy by Pharrell Williams. Mm. And for some reason I thought, you know, that'd be cool to do it with a slide guitar, you know, make it a little bit more bluesy. And then you've got the chords with that underlying bass line. Dun, 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 yeah, yeah. You know, um, so little things like that, you can get just a little bit of inspiration from from anywhere. To be quite honest, you know. Yeah. And then, like, I, I did a, I did a little bit of Led Zeppelin's uh, "Ramble On," just a quick little thing because I've I wanted to try and do the chords and the bass. It was just for fun, really. Um, I didn't actually put in the vocals because this is the thing where I tried putting in the vocals and it just didn't work. It didn't sound good, you know. Because I don't know if you're too familiar with the song, the, vo- the vocals, it's, it's just one note pretty much the whole, well, for the intro. Leaves are falling all around. Dun, 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 dun. You know, it's, there's not much going on there. Yeah. And trying to do that with a guitar and a bass line, it was like, oh, you know. It's the, really same, the, the same reason I, I very rarely tackle like songs with like rapping in. Because yeah. the, the vocal <laughs> just doesn't really work. There's, there's, a, there's a deep cut, a deep cut of me in 2013 on the, on the Helsinki subway with uh, my buddy yeah. Petteri Sariola doing a freestyle version of the song Freestyler by Bomb Funk MCs. <laughs> um, and I'm rapping on it as a joke, right? Because it's yeah. like you're clearly not going to put that into the, to the thing, but you know, doing the drum and bass guitar thing. But, yeah. um, but that's another thing is that, you know, which, what, how do you know which song to arrange? The top line is so important in that. And um, yeah, yeah. and yeah, one hundred percent. It was really interesting to hear you say that you chose to leave out the vocal element rather than trying to shoehorn it in to create an effective arrangement. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, um, it just didn't work. Yeah. I I I'm midway through um an arrangement now that that its genesis came from, like you say, just happened to hear it and a spark went off. It was um yeah. Enjoy the silence, Depeche Mode. Um, okay. and, um, I, my dad was around when I moved in, I had just moved into this house and my dad was helping me put up these panels, um, in this room here. And as we, as we were doing that, um, he, you know, I, I'm just like, Hey, what music do you want to listen to? And he just asked for that song. And I heard it. it it's very led by this kind of melody of bum, 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 this thing. And I thought, wouldn't that be cool to do with banjo tuners, you know, um, uh-huh. kind of keep that going. And, 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 but I want to, I want to take that arrangement and turn it into, instead of a sort of, which it kind of is, what if we just turn it into like a Nine Inch Nails kind of <laughs> big distortions and doom and space yeah. and reverb and octave and uh, grit and dirt and filth and make it just a yeah. goth 
thing. Yes, and I got yes. this 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 evil looking guitar behind me here, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm I, I've got a few sections down. It, it's going to turn into something quite cool, but uh, I, I can't put a, a schedule on it. But but that came from literally not looking for a song to cover, just hearing something and thinking, oh, I can imagine I can imagine that being played by the top line, this being played by you know a tapping thing here, and yeah, you yeah. know, well let's exactly. leave let's leave that percussion out because there's a lot of percussion overkill right now, and I'm kind of veering away from that i don't know i don't know about yourself you, you, your preston reed style isn't super percussion heavy so i, yeah. I don't consider I mean, that, you too much of a percussive player but yeah that's probably as far as i got in terms of the percussion i mean i'd like to do more of it um but yeah there's a lot of it out there isn't there yeah i i feel like um i i feel like now the scene has progressed to the point where you know, you start with these kind of Wyndham Hill guys and, and you know, sort of melody and texture based stuff. And then it progresses into this kind of, OK, well, let's take things a little bit further. And you get to the Annie McKee school and then things get progressed a little bit further. And now we're at a stage where we've pretty much eked out every 30 second note in a bar that you can, you know, <laughs> um, you know, in, in, a, in a piece of music. So it will be really interesting to see what happens next and whether, you know, and talking to Khaki King, for example, um, doing another episode of this this podcast here and her music is so transcendent and ethereal and, and and all about vibe and talking to Fink as well another musician who I spoke to uh, amazing singer songwriter that's their thing is it's all vibe and and and, and ambience and, and atmosphere and texture and and they're the they're the songs that are getting synced on you know a WhatsApp commercial or a or a you know a, a, an episode of House or an episode of CSI or Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul or whatever it's not you know, oh, it's not overkill on the playing side, and it's really it's. I'm wondering if the whole scene goes that way, as you know, the post-corona world takes maybe some of the touring away. Who knows? You know, maybe yeah. maybe the 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 sync and the 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 listenable side of finger style will uh, will emerge in the end. It's really interesting. It's at this 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 point, but then you know, who could have foreseen this as a, as a genre? even like 15 years ago, was a viable genre yeah. to make a living from. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's great, though. I it's mean, amazing. Yeah. I don't know. I well, mean, I was going to say, speaking of, you know, this, this genre and where it's going to go and, you know, whatever happens after COVID-19, do you have any plans to to get out there and tour and, and do the Nathaniel Murphy show and, and, and things like that. Is this something that you're actively thinking about or is it still a case of building the business card? It, it's it's definitely something I think about. It's, it's the fear of it as well, in the sense, I don't know where to start or how to get started. Do you know what I mean? I mean, is it a case of where I just try and go to places local around here? Um, you know, just play a gig and then put it on my Instagram story hole. Hey, I'm you know I'm playing a gig at this place at this time. Is that the best way to go about it, or do I reach out to other like-minded players and say, how do I get started? You know, I genuinely think about it, and I genuinely don't know how to start or where to start. I mean, what what would your advice be, for example? How old are you? I'm 33, so I'm getting on a bit. Okay, I'm 31, so which means I'm in no position to give anyone advice <laughs> who is 33. No, honestly, like I, I, I'm an idiot, so you know that anyway. But I mean, honestly, you have so much to offer any kind of package tour because your uh, an image of your Instagram look that everyone recognizes will make people buy tickets. The name Nathaniel Murphy right now obviously has value but i feel like the the visual image of oh it's that guy i've seen his videos on tommy lee's story you know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> has a thing so so if i if i was in your position i'd probably just pitch to some booking agents and and, and have a discussion and think you know maybe you know they can put you on a tour as as, an Ze an as zeppelin you know as zeppelin <laughs> yeah. bar not blah blah, blah. <laughs> with 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 an image on the poster because think about think about Dwayne the Rock Johnson right so yeah, he yeah. he he jumped from WWE or WWF at the time to, to I'm, I'm no wrestling fanatic I just know the Rock right so yeah. he came to movies as the Rock and then he became Dwayne the Rock Johnson and now he's kind of Dwayne Highest Johnson well yeah yeah exactly but but more to the point he 
you know, he knew that people didn't know Dwayne Johnson as much as they knew The Rock as a brand, right? Exactly. True, so, true. so yeah, I mean, something like International Guitar Night, which um, uh, was, yeah, as I said, the tour that, that I came through your town on, you know, mm. you'd be perfect for something like that, but you're in America, so it might not work. However, you are from uh, Ireland, so it would work. So International Guitar Night, they say there's no American players, or there's one American player on the roster and the rest have to be international, right? But yeah, right. like if you were to hit them up, and I'm more than happy to, you know, uh, connect you guys, and, and you know, if you're billed as zeppelin banarara brackets nathaniel <laughs> murphy or something uh, you know it there's there's a there's a, a intense value there but i think it's i think it's probably a, a situation of of presenting your instagram brand as the act to yeah. begin with and then and then yeah. shifting it if you want but again I, i'm just an idiot like I, I i i just float through life and say yes to some things that's like literally how i've operated until this point so i'm not like any kind of sage of advice by no, no, means. it's 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 good advice, and I'm I'm willing to take advice from anyone. I mean, it's it's interesting as well, like the whole international guitar night. That'd be that'd be amazing. I mean, again, it's traveling around playing because I often think and I often get asked, well, right, well, what's the next step? Are you actually going to play live anywhere? What are you going to do next? And it's like, yeah, I, I want to. And it's like, well, right, well, what's holding you back? And I mean, it's a couple of things. It's it's like the fear of it not working out. You know, um, little things like that. Well, that's why support tours are so fun. Um, you know, I, I would happily just do support tours for the rest of my life, really, because you don't have to deal with really any anxiety. You're, mm. you know, in, in financially, you're obviously getting a much smaller check for your fee. However, if you're a, if you're lucky enough to get onto a support tour with a decent yeah. sized audience, and you are really and you smash it and end up selling a lot of merchandise that makes up for that difference so for example if you're going out and headlining but only have a pull of say 100 people mm. but your fee's a bit larger but if you get you know you might walk away with with x but then if you go on a support tour in front of 10,000 people you know you could do the support you could do the slot for free but you're going to be you know making a lot more because you're selling merchandise to a lot more people as long as fans are still willing to support artists at the merch table so yeah, you know yeah. that would be an ideal thing if if you're at all anxious about the touring thing is you have the safety net of someone else's audience but a wonderful introduction to new fans and you get to 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 travel around the world in the process um yeah, yeah. but you, you know it's interesting the solo guitar scene is so different to say you know touring metal bands or something like this it's People, so many people resent touring because they just think of vans and crappy backstages and sleeping on the floor and, and being <laughs> yeah. unwashed. And if there's no budget, but you're, you've got like six or seven mouths to feed, I get that. But you're very fortunate because you're set up to do a one-man show, you know? So, so, you, so you're able to to budget for budget to do it relatively comfortably and another thing is the only reason i bring this up i'm not trying to um sort of trap the guy with the instagram page and say when are you going to no, tour no, no. the only reason i yeah. say that is because i've seen you play and you are you you are legit and you are one of the people that would do an amazing full live show and not everyone who has viral videos is like that at all you know but but i've seen clips of you playing with dweezil zappa you know, online, and I've seen you play just in person. So I, I say this, and anyone listening, if you see Zeppelin blah, 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 come through town, <laughs> go to the show because it's going to be sick. Uh, and I'm sure, I'm sure anyone watching will agree. And, and that's a testament oh, to how you, it's a testament to how you present yourself in a very organic way online. So, so really, yeah, it's it's. I'm really excited to do a show together. You know, let's go on tour together. That'll be that'll be fun. I'll you know, to happily do that. Yeah, just bring out the Rick Nielsen <laughs> guitar. There you go. You can play it, right? Awesome, dude. Exactly. Well, hey, I, I, th I think we're pretty much we're pretty much good for time now. So, is there anything? Oh, you know what? Before we go, I do want to give a shout out to the Tonewood Amp guys for for helping me kind of put this thing together. You, you, do you have a Tonewood Amp, or you've used one? Before? I do, I do. I mean, I, I think the the first time. I don't. Want to, you know, hopefully, I'm not taking up too much time. But I remember. The, so the the summer I met the summer Nam where I met you. That was the first time that I actually got to play one because I'd seen it all over like Instagram. I'd seen, I'd seen yourself using it. I'd seen like Dylan Fowley using them, and you know everyone was raving about them, and they sounded incredible in the videos. So I thought, you know, I'd, I'd love to check them out. And I remember, 
I can't remember the, the name of the, the fella there um, at Tom Woodamp. You know, he'd, he'd bring people into the little sound booth room at at the, you know, at NAMM. Yeah. And he would show me how it works. And I remember you, would, you, you helped me out as well. I couldn't believe how good it actually sounded in person, you know. To be able to just sit on your couch at home and have the reverb and chorus and all that, it's unbelievable, you know. Yeah, it's it's when you go into those um, you know sealed fart chambers at Nam <laughs> and get to actually hear it in the soundproof environment, it is something else. Yeah, sh- super shout out to the Tone Winamp guys. Um, yes, you know it's 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 really interesting. I- I'm super passionate about this this device, and also because the guys running it are just you know literally husband and wife they created this thing in uh, at home in Arizona and and it's a real uh, it's a real testament to uh to their success in in innovating in the guitar world to have you know people such as yourself who clearly know tone and no sound and no guitar to sing its praises so highly so shout out to Helene and Ofer uh, at Tone Wood Amp if they're listening to yes. this while they're editing this podcast um we love you and thanks for changing our little guitar worlds well, yes, dude, thank you dude Nathaniel Murphy aka Zeppelin Barnard Barnards um Z- Zeppelin Barnacles <laughs> on Instagram go follow <laughs> him do. yeah Zeppelin Barnacles <laughs> you got to get Zeppelin Barnacles merch there we go you know you can get some t-shirts yeah. going there um yeah follow him on Instagram and YouTube and everywhere if you haven't um, it's been such an interesting insight talking to you about the world of new social media and uh, just being a general sick human um, it's been oh, a pleasure thank you man and next and time thank uh, you for having me hey pleasure man and next time this well when this lockdown you know uh, craps out and we're able to travel again I'll I'll hit you up in uh, next time I'm in Chicago and if you're over I'm in Bristol way just south of Manchester like three hours south of, Man- of Manchester let's, uh, let's have a drink or something Definitely. Nathaniel Murphy Definitely. thanks so much see you again Yes. Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out this week's episode of the podcast. For more information about this week's guest, head to the link in the description where you will also find more information about the Tonewood amp as well as that cheeky little discount you can get as well. Lots of love. See you next time.